Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. We're here to play some more Magic the Gathering, everyone. Um, if you guys tuned in last night, you know we're mid-draft. We've got a pretty neat draft deck going on. Corset 2021 doing a premiere draft because that's the most challenge. That's the most fun. Uh, we went Golgaria again. It's a mid-rangey, definitely a removal-heavy, control-heavy deck that just hopes to build value through lots of plus one plus one counters and the morbid-ish archetype that kind of fits into the uh, Golgari colors in the Corset 2021. We've done it before, we're going to try and do it again right now. We're four and one, thanks to I think the one of the games where we just didn't draw a forest when we really, really wanted to. Uh, but that being said, I'm naked. Welcome to the stream, everyone. Um, this is the deck. We've got a lot of good stuff here. Wildwood Scourge is quite nice considering how many cards we have that can get plus one plus one counters and none of them are Hydras. We ended up dropping our Sabertooth Mauler here in favor of another Hunter's Edge and a Dilophosaur. Just because Hunter's Edge, Dilophosaur, both are just so good. And if you can get enough plus one plus one counters on this guy, you can kill anything. Oh, man. But yeah, this deck's really cool. It's got a great curve. It's got plenty of two drops. It's got removal in the form of Grasp of Darkness, Hunter's Edge, and one finishing blow. We did draft another one, but if I'm going to remove and kind of slim down our deck, I think two finishing blows is a little outrageous. It does have the added benefit, however, of being able to take out that one lonesome mythic rare Planeswalker that comes along every now and then and... We could have really used it in one of our previous drafts where we could just couldn't stop the Basri. Couldn't stop a Basri. Oh, felt so bad. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, other than that, the last thing that we got to do before we actually get to playing Magic is, of course, discuss the mug of the stream. Tonight, we have our Artemis mug which we found courtesy of Atlantis Comics and Games. Shout out to the best comic shop in Hampton Roads. Uh, this one was Norfolk in particular. But myself, I wouldn't say I was like the biggest fan of Sailor Moon, but my daughter and I, I wanted to find something that she and I could watch together, and I'm a big fan of anime, and I said, let's give it a shot. And you know what? If we didn't watch all however many decades of Sailor Moon there was on Hulu in probably a month, I don't know what we were doing, but we watched so much Sailor Moon, and she is now just a full-on weeb, just like her dad. Loves Japanese culture, loves anime, loves all, like, got into Steven Universe, which is Korean animation. Ah, oh, we just love it all, and we connected over it, so this was actually a matching pair. One is Artemis, which I call mine. The other is Luna, which I call hers, except for when I want to use it, and then I call it mine because I'm in charge. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, mostly because she doesn't drink coffee, so <laughs> one day we'll have some hot chocolate in a nice little uh, Luna mug for her. Mm. And the little the little hat kept my tea nice and warm. So thanks again, Atlantis Comics and Games. You guys rock. You're the best. We love you. All right. So let me hit the enter button on my message here let everybody know in the magic discord that we are doing stuff and hopefully they'll join us and have some fun and again i said it in discord if you guys want to play me anytime if you guys want to talk about making a deck if you have some ideas i've been thinking and wondering all these different archetypes like i want to look at rogue archetypes given all the spoilers of today which by the way we do spoil things here on this channel so spoiler alert we spoil things. I'll give like a five second warning to anybody that's worried about it, but if you don't want spoilers, you probably shouldn't hang out. Zendikar Rising is shaping up to be a really, really interesting and fun set, both in limited and in constructed. I'm excited. Oh, man. Let's get to our next game. But yeah, I've been fooling around with the idea of like a warrior tribal slash warrior equipment tribal deck. Uh, Demir Rogue. Strikes me as particularly, if if not a little forced by Wizards of the Coast at this point, given that like Thieves Guild's Enforcer, Drown on the Line, there's lots of cards that would be very synergistic with a blue black Demir Rogue. Hmm. Uh, we could draw green, right? Demir Rogue kind of 
mill slash mid range tempo deck with brazen borrowers, thieves, guilds, enforcers, and a lot of rogues, including ghostly pilferer, perhaps from our favorite sets. So he can discard a card to make him unblockable. We'll see if he does that. Draws a card here. No attacks. Okay. We'll go with Devotee. No attacks. I really want a forest here. Hello, baby! Truffle Snout is good, but he's going to make it a 3-3. Three, three. Alright. Ugh, oh, that feels bad. I guess I could have played Skyscanner beforehand. Alright, we need green mana. No attacks. Okay. This is looking very much like the game where we had trouble recovering. Because we never saw the mana that we needed. So hopefully that's not what happens tonight. And he needs his snake boy real bad here. And he's using all his card draw to probably find it. I'm guessing he's got a lower scale Kotal here. He's got mana to play it, but does he have card draw to play it? And can we top deck a forest, please? Please, daddy. Can we do it? Okay. So we've got that. I'm going to attack with the Truffle Snout. Uh, I'll pass. No blocks. We'll take three. It's not going to cut it for much longer here. We've got a handful of green cards. Hmm. Yeah, we could play that, but we don't have anything to get back with it, unfortunately. Wow, that's great card advantage. Look at that. We'll take three, or take five. If he blocks, we can make a 3-2. He knows it. Come on, one green mana, please. If we can manage to get one green, we've got quite a bit of options. We can kill anything with Fetid Imp, but then we waste the plus one, plus one counter. Sure. <sighs> okay, so there's, there's a choice. So let's do this. See what he has to say about it. <sighs> Good game. All he has to do is attack. See, unfortunately, he's got a, card, a handful of cards, and we only have one green. Not much we could do there, unfortunately. But hey, you know, that's what happens when you don't draw the lands you need. 
We also have three other removal spells that we could have drawn, but oh well. Having green mana would have stopped the capture sphere. Would have stopped a lot. Oh, man. Hey, Mike. How you doing, man? This is much better. We got a second turn, Kieran Dryad, into a third turn, Devotee, into either a Porcullus Vine that we can turn into a zombie. Oh, man. No, we can't turn it into a zombie just yet, but soon. Let's gain a life. Fix our mana. Mana looks pretty decent. All right, let's play a forest. Let's play a dryad. Okay. Mistral Singer seems pretty good. We'll play a devotee. Also seems good. No attacks today. We will Hunter's Edge that Mistral Singer at, at our at the soonest possibility. Yep, no flyers. So go for it. Hmm. Swift response. Okay. Interesting. The good news is we can do this. All right. So we can grasp that and keep going. I say we play... Pride Malkin with a plus one, plus one counter. And let's just go ahead and swing and see what he does here. And let's go ahead and put out the Portcullis Vine. He doesn't have a lot of flyers, so I'm not worried about the card advantage from Tide Skimmer yet. Let's do this. All right, that's a choice. Let's draw a card. Get a 2 2 zombie. We'll end our turn. We will auto pay. Yep. And yes, these don't untap yet. Well, we'll go ahead and let them have it. What do you got? He's got something holding priority. taking this out oh he's taking it away all right well i say why don't we do this and then we'll go ahead and attack good game Either one game or two games left, y'all. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Hmm. 
All right, again, we're playing a uh, Golgari mid rangey draft deck. Lots of removal, some creatures that give us lots of value, like Liliana's Devotee does. Just making zombies. Um, some bigger green creatures. Would have liked to have gotten a Burl Fist Oak. I think I passed one for a Hunter's Edge. Hey, look at that mana, y'all. Excuse me. That's what we like to see. One of each color is good. Skyway Sniper. Okay. I should have played the Swamp. If I draw a... Grasp, I'd want that more. So I could have a turn for... Colossal Dreadmaw, potentially, if he doesn't have some way of removing this Mur. So we'll see. Got two Hunter's Edges. Seems pretty strong. A turn four Dreadmaw in draft is going to be tough for any partner to deal with. Followed that up with a couple of Hunter's Edges and... It's going to be tough for many people to deal with. Alright. So I think we swing here. See what happens. Okay. And now I've got enough mana. I've got five mana. I can cast my Dilophosaur and my Pride Malkin. Or my Pride Malkin and a Hunter's Edge. Or Devotee. Let's get Devotee and Dilophosaur on the field here. Let's see what they want to kill. If you guys see a Palladium Mur in draft, I would recommend getting it pretty quick. It is a pretty good card. Ooh, he's got his own. He's got his own. Okay. Good news, everyone. It's going to be okay. Now I could do... Uh, yeah, let's do this. And let's put it on there. Oh, my plus one, plus one counter trampoly boys. I mean, I would have blocked to save myself from one turn, but okay. One game left, no matter what. Six and two. Oh, we get a rank, so that's nice. Fresh from reset, of course. But yeah, making progress. Definitely more than even money at this point. We're drafting for free, y'all. Woo woo. <clears throat> oh, man. If you guys have wondered what kind of great things people have pulled from the giveaway you can always drop by my discord and say hello as well as check out all the lovely pictures of people pulling sweet ass cards from a sweet ass set but um yeah get wrecked hello nice heart not a crazy day oh while it's loading i do want to do a little plug if you guys think of maybe subbing to me aside from Twitch Prime, please, instead, you'll notice that all the subs have this on there, but go to autism.org. It's the Autism Research Institute. It's a fair, it's a lovely, it's a wonderful place. And if you think about giving me money, I'd highly recommend, rather, uh, that you give autism the Autism Research Institute that same amount of money. Because, you know, I'm just a smuck that plays magic cards, and there are people literally saving lives all the time. Yeah, this is a curve. I like it. Let's keep. First turn swamp. Ooh, we got mountain boys. All right. No attacks, though. Interesting. 
All right. We won't attack either because he'll kill my walking corpse. Next turn, we've got a Hunter's Edge on Walking Corpse to take care of stuff if we want to. We don't have to. Oh, that's what we're taking care of. This is an interesting choice here, because he's going to have to discard one or the other if he gets two. Okay, no, t no attacks. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, we'll play this now. We will go ahead and take him out. And we will swing across. Yeah, I'll take out Pride Malkin. Gives us something to get back with Sanguine Indulgence, so it's not a terrible plan. Hopefully he doesn't have the Scorch... Ooh, he's three color. Hopefully he doesn't have the Scorching Dragon Fire for the Walking Corpse here this turn, which it doesn't look like he does. So we'll play this. We'll have mana up for the Imp. We'll have mana up for Ranger's Guile, and we'll just keep swinging. And here, we will probably sacrifice the Fetid Imp. Ooh, look at that! Yeah, we'll definitely sacrifice that for this guy and use our Sanguine Indulgence. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. We need some removal here. Or Twin Blade Assassins is also quite good. And then we can reload with Sanguine Indulgence as well. If he attacks, we don't block. Interesting choice, but we can get it back. Hmm, should have done that. Twin Blade, and I think we go ahead and get the Fetid Imp. No attacks, because we'll counterattack for three if we have to. And next turn we'll be able to play Twin Blade with Ranger's Guile up. So he's going wide. And he gains trample. Okay. Another Houndmaster. Okay. I wonder if he's still got them. No. no I don't want that step. Stop. Stop stepping. Are you going to attack with Bone Pit Brute? Because that's a good plan. Hmm. I think we just go ahead and get the Twin Blades online. No attacks. Slowly but surely, get through this. Ooh, that's not good. That is just straight removal. We need to get rid of that selfless savior. Is he getting rid of it and sacrificing the savior? I would sacrifice the cur. All right. Which one do we want the most? <sighs> He's got no cards in hand. So we could take eight here and Ranger's Guile and keep our walking corpse. Which I kind of like the sound of. But 
Let's do this. Actually, let's sacrifice the Watchman Corpse and kill this and see what he does with his selfless savior here. Oh, I love it. All right, seems good. <sighs> we really wanted that to happen. Okay. Okay. We're low on cards. But we get to draw something. So hey, you know. Could still be anybody's game. Here I think we block the Igneous Cur with our Fetid Imp. Because he could pump it way too much otherwise. He doesn't have any cards in hand. Why is he throwing this away? Okay. I think here we just start swinging, right? Hold up the Ranger's Guile. He forgot to magmut. Oh, are you mad now? He's got a lot of land. That might be mad, maddening, perhaps. <sighs> wow, look at that name though. Jock, 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 jock. Jock, 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 jock. Yes, block. Block. Do it. Yes. Oh, he's not doing it now. So we can Ranger's Guile if he goes unblocked again this next turn. And clinch the victory. Okay, just two, huh? Decisions here are quite strange. No cards in hand. Let's all attack. Are you going to block? He is this time. Cool. Go ahead and do your thing. That's fine. And then we get to draw a card at the end of the turn. Ah. Oh. She's a beauty. One in a million girls. All right. Homeboy's doing it. I think we just take the four, kill the Daybreak Charger, and then win the game with our Ranger's Guile, right? There we go. Whew. Homie loves it.
when they tap out with no tart or tap out or they don't have any cards in hand that feels pretty good not too bad i think we screamed through gold two into gold one with just this draft so that feels good but excuse me so just to finalize the deck it's golgari tempo control with a lot of creatures that just grow We've got lots of effects to put plus one, plus one counters on our creatures and lots of things that take advantage of that. For example, uh, Wildwood Scourge, Pride Malkin. Both of those do a great job of giving things trample that have plus one, plus one counters as well as growing bigger as things get plus one, plus one counters. The Scourge gets triggered by the Dryad, the Pride Malkin, the Hunter's Edge. All of those can help grow that Hydra even bigger. Um... Yeah, so we went 7-2. and two. Pretty cool. I think we're going to go ahead and draft again, just because it's a quiet night so far. Unless anyone wants to pipe up and hit me up and play some magic with me, that's what we'll do. So we'll retire the stack. We'll see what we got. We got six packs, 2,200 gems, enough for the next draft. So let's take a look here. I think we've only got a few stray mythics. Left in Corset 2021. There's another wild card. You'll love to see it. I guess every 7 and 2 is a free wild card of some kind. Oh. And we've got Mangara. Okay. I know I didn't have a playset of him, but he that's not the first one I've drawn. So, Last pack of the night. Or of right now is gems, and uh, we're almost at the 200 point, which means that we're going to unlock some more wild cards via that. Uh, with mastery, we are at the max level for mastery, so all we're doing is getting uncommon rewards, which I think can uptick to a rare if we're lucky. But still, you know, we're going to be professionals about this. So let's, um, you know, I've been terrible at drafting. Um, Throne of Eldrain. It's almost gone. I do want to do it again, though. Oh, well, let's just do it for gold. How about that, y'all? Alright, so what's our rare? Garrick Cursed Huntsman. That, to me, is a much bomb. Good, good card. I'd like to play that, please. Savvy Hunter is good. Memory Theft. Barrel Witches is good for knights. Ginger Brute is okay. But... Savvy Hunter seems good. Oakum Adversary is good. Ooh. Two less to cast if it controls. Right, let's take the Oakum Adversary. We'll see if the Noble goes around again. Ooh, we can take some ramp and get ourselves some extra damage. Alright, so it's pack five. How much black and how much green are we seeing? The answer is not a lot. We're seeing quite a bit of blue. We're seeing quite a bit of red. Ultimately, though the thing that we're seeing here is removal, it could just be that we're not seeing the best stuff. Tall is a beanstalk. Fell the pheasant. Foreboding fruit. Ooh, that seems pretty interesting. Tall's Beanstalk strikes me as something that would wheel, but probably what will wheel is the Roving Keep. Let's take the Foreboding Fruit. Card advantage is pretty good. Uh, Garabrick Squire is a solid choice. Ooh, Giant Skewer is also a solid choice. Yeah, we'll take the Giant Skewer. Mm. Mm. I guess we could do this one, Forever Young. We could get something back from our graveyard. Halberd here seems interesting. And we can attach it to non-human creatures. Shambling Suit, Artifacts and Enchantments, that's not too terrible. Weapon Rack, ooh, the Eye Collector. Um... Went around. It wheeled. Blow your house down is good, but we're probably not going to play it. 
Piper of the Swarm. Rats you control have menace. Create a rat. Sacrifice three rats. Gain some control of target creature. That strikes me as quite good as well. But uh, yeah, let's let's do it. And then uh, maybe the oven. Oven without cats seems bad. Hushbringer, Commander, Barrow, which is out muscle. Ooh, I like that. Wolf's Quarry is also interesting. But I think the out muscle is the best choice here. It's a better version of the hunt card from what's it called from 2021. Fierce Stalker is good. Tempting Witch is good. What are our uncommons? Animating Fairy and Skull Knocker Ogre. I feel like Tempting Witch might uh, wheel, and I want the 4 4. We'll take him for now. I expect to see more of those. Oh, let's just put it that way. Wildwood Tracker is good. It's quite a good uh, 1 1. All oh, that glitters. Wow, what a good card. Garen Brig Paladin. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Another form foreboding fruit. Hmm. This is probably the toughest choice of all of them so far, but I think Paladin's the way to go. It might end up getting cut. Ugh. This absolution is almost worth splashing for. Hmm. Draw two more cards. You know what? I'm going to take it. Just in case. It's pro-white. It's not too bad. Uh, I'll take the Mara Leaf Rider and see if we can do something pretty good with it. We need two drops. I know, I, I know, I know. You think we don't, but we do. We do need two drops. Two drops is where it's at. Ooh, another Malevolent Noble. Yeah, let's take that. It's human, but it's also not terrible. Another Fell of Pheasant, a Return to Nature, Tuenvel Tree Folk. Six mana, six five, and the ability to put plus one, plus one counters on something seems pretty good. Um, here we'll take the dummy. We'll take the gingerbread captain. Flutterfox going around is kind of insane. Cool. All right. Ooh, and a clackbridge troll. I'm going to be so mad if I do poorly this game. I'm going to be so mad. So that's a Doom Foretold. There's not a lot for green or black here. We could do another Garenbreg Squire. <sighs> Tall as a beanstalk. Let's look through here. Probably not going to be using that. Let's go ahead and cut. Well, it's not bad. Buy five for five. Which one? The squire, y'all? Or... Uh, I, don't, I just don't think that's that good. Where do we get the 40, the 20 gems? You know, it's a food. What do you got on the sideboard so far? A bunch of red. Hmm. Hmm. This is a tough choice, y'all. This is a tough choice. Let's take the Ginger Brute. And if we can get Tall as a Beanstalk on that guy, that'd be pretty neat. Ooh, Sir Conrad, though. Okay. Yeah. Sir Conrad's such a good card. Cauldron's Gift. Uh, if at least oh, it's only adamant. Okay, another noble, as well as a tall as the beanstalk. That's such bad card advantage, though. Just sets us up for a bacon to a pie. Hey, -oh! hey, buddy, what you doing? I'm pack three of a quick draft. In which I am, I think we'll take the noble. How many creatures do we have? 
15. Yeah, this might be the last one for a while, so. Yeah, we'll take that over the cauldron's gift. Or do we? Do we actually do that? Let's take the... Yeah, let's take the cauldron's gift. It can help us get our bigger creatures back if we need it. Tempting Witch for our green-black food deck so far. Finished a gobs deck I've been working on. Ooh, you want to play later? I'll play a gobs deck. Silver Flame Ritual is quite good. That's quite good. I am sad that I didn't take that other one. Um, Here we'll take the Knight. 2-1 Life Linky Boy is pretty good. Fell the Pheasant. Uh, we'll take this over the Eye Collector. Just see what we get. No, this is excellent. We'll put that in the sideboard. Yeah, I've got a historic goblin deck. I'm down. I'm down with it. Do you have Muxus? Are you a professional? Only five cards to cut today. Let's see. I don't know if Cauldron's Gift is going to be what we want. After all that, I should have taken the other Malevolent Noble. But honestly, I don't think Garbreg Squire is where it's at either. Let's see our Outmuscle. Outmuscle is just a creature we control. Okay. I think if we're going to cut something, we cut there. Excuse me. We can use food to make Marleaf Rider an unblockable creature. All right. You don't have the wild cards yet? Well, just so you know, if you go up against me in Historic, my goblin deck has Muxus. So, pow, no more unfair Crater Hoof business from you, young man. Eye Collector, Rose Thorn, Halberd. I think that can come out. Let's get rid of that. Two more cards to cut. We've got our Garrick Cursed Huntsman still. We've got a Twin Veil Tree Folk, which is really nice. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. We've got Sir Conrad the Grim. That kind of fits in with our Cauldron Gift. Maybe we want to add another one in and just have ourselves mill. Because we've got Eye Collector too. Oh, will you? I'll beat that Stompy deck with Goblins. Easy day. Guarantee it. <sighs> we need to cut two more cards, I think. Festive Funeral. Mm, that's our only removal. I think Garen Brick Paladin goes. And I think we're going to keep Clackbridge. We're going to keep Sir Conrad. Two of El Tree Folk is also a four mana spell that helps us to keep big boys on the field. <clears throat> our Heraldric Banner helps us mana fix. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, let's get rid of... Hmm, which one would you guys get rid of? Probably the Jousting Dummy, honestly. I think that's the choice here. There's a lot of artifact removal. Let's see how we did. Hi, Adam. Miss you, buddy. Hmm. <clears throat> so this is our deck. I, I just finished it, but I didn't talk about it. We've got some gingerbread cabin, which might make a food. And then we've got kind of like a food strategy. We've definitely got a way to use food to gain life if we end up in a bad position. But we drew a few bombs in the end. We drew Clackbridge Troll, which is game-breaking in Limited. Sure, it... Uh, comes into play and they can sacrifice three goats for three turns but if they do that then you gain three life each time and draw a card that's what's really valuable here he is <laughs> well he should come over and watch me stream and then we'll just have a sweet little party with me and a three-year-old and magic the gathering you know that's my favorite part about all this um we've got some removal in the form of festival funeral out muscle and fell the pheasant for annoying flyers again this set Fell, uh, Fell the Pheasant is not too bad 
to take. There's lots of blue-white flyers. There's lots of artifact flyers. And I think it's worthy to include, especially given the synergy, considering we've got lots of food, you know. Uh, food here isn't going to be used to take advantage of, like, a kitty oven, but it will be taken advantage of to artificially pump up our life total. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's take her for a spin. We've also got certain ways to, like, make our Ginger Brute unblockable with certain equipment on him, which is pretty cool. Which I did take out that green one. Maybe I should consider putting that back in. Oh, boy. It's happening. It's happening, everyone. We're getting the three one-color mana and not the other one. But if you mulligan, and then you don't get back all of Like, is this better or worse than a six land or a six hand? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Adam is my favorite nephew. Adam, you're the best. So we'll play the Gingerbread Cabin. I don't want to try and get to three other forests. I want Karma to come out and... Oh, man, this is going to be rough. Aha! Never punished! Ha 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 ha! So we can giant skewer that eventually. Um, If he wants to kill my noble, we'll do that. I'm scared of it, so... <sighs> okay. Let's do this and yes. Might have been better to play Giant Skewer to be able to have up our Oh, never mind. Everything's going to come up us now. We'll play this. And uh, we'll no attack. This is a nice little knight synergy. You can tap him to do damage to an opponent, and then untaps every time a knight comes into play. It's pretty handy if you have the knight archetype, which I've tried to do twice in this quick draft and had very limited success. It might be because I went three color or I didn't get the the kind of knights that I want. It just seems like the curve is really tough and messed up, so. Torbrand. Okay. Yikes. Alright. Well. Hold on. Let's make sure that we play our eye collector first. Now, he's going to start picking at me with his Brimstone Trebuchet. If I draw one more land, we could be in business for uh, Clackbridge Troll, which will start drawing cards and gaining his life almost immediately. So here comes another knight. Trample haste. Okay. Hmm. Get a food token. If we don't have anything, I suppose we'll just play the adversary again. Nope, we do. But it's not black, so it won't be Clackbridge Troll. Awesome. Yep. Oh, man. Come on, Swamp. That's all Daddy wants. You have another knight already? Look at that. I 
So here, if I get another land, I'll play Garrick, Cursed Huntsman, and just destroy Torbran. Alright, here we go. Yep, do it. Do it while you can. You ever listen to the crickets? That's my kind of music. That's what I would do. That's fair. Cool. We might be able to get through this. Next turn, we can play Clackbridge Troll. We can also make a couple of green wolf creature tokens. But we had to get that bad boy off the field. So he's going to take out Garrick, probably. Or try to. I will block. With Eye Collector. If he's got some way to trample here, we could be in trouble. Okay, so that flying on the Paladin there is temporary. All right, let's play this. Let's play Clackbridge Troll. Let's do this. All right, and we'll end our turn. Here we'll make Giant Skewer onto Okim Adversary. Okay. We were born for the hunt. Nothing, huh? Oh, maybe he is picking. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, that gets us some more life. <clears throat> Good game. Whew. Whew, that was close. Well, both of our bombs showed up, so helped us recover there quite a bit. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that was very stressful being that low for so long, but like I said, we've got a lot of late game plays and a lot of food that's gonna get us into the late game, hopefully, and that's what allowed us to hold on. And if he had alpha attacked there, we would have blocked with all of our wolves, made some more food, gained three life. Oh, man. Much stress. <laughs> oh, boy. Have any of you, any of you, everybody in chat uh, ever... Have you ever? Has anyone drafted Throne of Eldraine lately and had a good time? Because I've been having bad luck, but I'm trying to get better at it. Therefore, we draft more. That's that's the whole idea. So you can't get good at something if you're... <sighs> so we've got cards. We've got a way to get black mana if we want it. We'll go ahead and keep here. A turn two Marleaf Riders. Something pretty good. It's pretty good. All we need is one more land for banner. He's like, well, no one drops. All right. Karn, we believe in the heart of the cards. Don't fail us now, buddy. One black mana would be even better. All right. What do we want here? I think we want to go ahead and say black, because we've got a lot of double black costs. Don't necessarily mind missing out on that. But I think we're going to go tree folk here and put two plus one plus one counters on our Mara Leaf Rider to see where the road takes us. <sighs> we can also out muscle it. Doesn't make him indestructible though, and it is a fight effect, so it would still kill him. Hmm. I think we just go ahead and tree folk. Keep up the pressure. <clears throat> Next turn we could tracker and noble. Alright. I like that. And we can outmuscle anything else that he plays now, too, because we've got a pretty tough boy. Don't have the three green, but who knows? Maybe we'll draw it. We don't know. Go for it, pal. What's the matter? Are you scared? Okay. That feels out of place. For a temporary thing. Maybe Scorching Dragonfire? Fling. Okay. Fair. 
We will... That's the funeral of that. And then we will rebuild with our Wildwood Tracker and our Malevolent Noble, as well as Outmuscle. Okay. Actually, we'll just play our Tree Folk. That seems pretty good to me. Man, we said black. All of our creatures have been so green. What does this do? Non-human creatures. Okay. So this does not come into play untapped, unfortunately. But I think what we do here is we outmuscle. And we swing for seven. Go ahead and play this. We'll see how this goes. Oh, so he stomps his his boy. Let's see, this is interesting. Okay, so here. Let's attack. He's tapped out, and we win. Okay, neat. Whew. Whew. Not bad for Throne, but I have done poorly in Throne before after doing well the first couple of games. So you never know. You never know. Man, I've been playing a lot of black-green. I still stand by the fact that my favorite card is Spirit Monger, and who doesn't love a deck that's got lots of removal while still playing big creatures? And that's what Black Green offers everybody, right? That's the dream. That's what people like. Oh, man. Let's do this, streamers. I'm looking at everybody in my chat. It just seems like there are so many bots. Is this a bot? This has got to be a bot, right? Well, he's hosting somebody, so maybe he's not a bot. He's just a homie. Okay. Oh, September, get the hell out of here. No one wants money. Are you kidding me? Who wants money? I like money. <clears throat> I am excited for a couple of days where the draft format will change for a couple of weeks, and then... We'll get to Zendikar Rising, which if you guys haven't seen any spoilers, good lord, there's so much stuff going on in Zendikar Rising, I don't even know where to start. Uh, let's go to Aether Hub and see what was spoiled today. Uh, this is pretty good. We play Mara Leaf Rider, turn two, off of the Gingerbread Cabin. We can Banner for black. I like this a lot. But there are so many spoilers. That does change very little here. I mean, Ginger Brute turn one is not as good as Marleaf turn two or Tempting Reach turn three. Marleaf Rider can even be a source of, a, of removal if they're not careful. Oh, so nice. Yeah. We'll play that. We'll probably go Banner into Sir Conrad if we can. We'll name black. Sir Conrad's very good. Quarter monitor turn three. Interesting choice. Uh, let's play this. No, that makes me want to play black, but at the same time, I can't. So we'll just do this. We'll name black, and we can get our ginger brute out on the field. And we'll just. Hold on for right now. No need to attack Corridor Monitor. I wonder what he's going to do with that. Seems pretty good. I think our plan is still good. Uh, yeah, we'll take one. No blocks. 
playing Sir Conrad. He's a big meaty boy. And we just keep playing out the threats here. And this way, every time he attacks, if he's got something real big, we'll just do that. If he wants to trade with Queen of Ice, we'll do it. Nice. Didn't even have to sacrifice a food for it. Boom. Boom. Sir Conrad the Grim! So nice. Such spice. Alright. He'll come back. Here, no blocks. We've got uh, the ability to make a 3-3 three, three out of Ginger Brute and swing for 3 unblockable every turn, which is so nice. I think that's the play. Forever Young, go for it. All right, so let's do this. I didn't need to, but you know. Oh well. Hopefully we can get him low enough that it won't matter. Equal to the number of cards in your hand, sure. You got it, homie. So we could play our tree folk here. Um Yeah, he's tapped out. Let's do that. And we could play our fist, Fierce Witch Stalker here. And our Eye Collector too. So we'll make a food. We'll play this. And we could possibly get... I guess we'll play the Tree Folk next turn. Or we could play Tempting Witch and use some Sir Conrad the Grim shenanigans. Vantress Paladin. Okay. 3-3... Three, three. Okay, so he's locked down for a couple turns. That's fine. Let's do our tree folk boy. You can do a one for one here. All right, so which one do we hate the most? Probably Sir Eleanor, right? So let's take her out. We'll do two damage, thanks to Sir Conrad. And we'll end our turn. Lots of pressure here. Okay, another Vantress Paladin. And Queen of Ice. All right. Okay. Uh, no blocks. We'll take three here. We're still going to take unblockable. They're going to take three damage unblockable. How many knights do I have? I have one knight. Let's do this. And yeah, let's make sure that we use green for this. We'll go to combat. Sure, we'll kill both of them. Resolve all. And then we will play that. And another one. Pass the turn. Next turn, we win with Tempting Witch alone or Ginger Brute, whichever one. <sighs> okay. Good game. Good game. Is that three? I think it's three. Yeah, let's play after this one. 
Ooh, Timurette chosen from death. Also known as the Screamy Boy. Showtime is 5.30 again. Yeah, let's uh do this. And then you, no looky looky. You can listen. You can leave me unmuted. Because maybe I'll talk shit. Maybe I'll lie to you. I don't know. I just don't want you looking, you know? And then uh, we will we will play some games, brother. All right. Challenge! If you guys want to test decks, do deck techs, do anything, you guys can drop in our uh, Discord. Say hello. I will play any deck you guys want me to play. I will let you guys choose what you want to play against it. I am just all about playing Magic. Please embarrass me on the internet in front of all the lovely people. All four of you that watch me stream. <laughs> Again, if you guys missed it. Mm. The mug of the stream is Artemis from Sailor Moon. Because he's a professional. Uh, we'll keep. Man! Wes better just concede, because this is the best hand ever of all time. What a hand. <laughs> How dare you. I think... Wily Goblin is good here. Yes, give me treasure. Show me sight beyond sight! So here... He's got lots of mana, but he told me you didn't have Muxus. But guess who's about to have Muxus, homie? Not your pal. <laughs> I tricked you! Had almost the perfect draw. If I had had a Skirt Prospector instead of one of these Goblin Instigators, ugh, be so good. No attacks yet. If you want to attack into me, homie, we can do it. But I'm going to finish this first. Ooh, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Man, that is an ugly Goblin. Krinko? Krinko? Rinko. Really? Alright, that's a play. Let's do this. Then... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, take the action. Um... I think we'll do that. And then we'll do this. <laughs> Thanks. All right, what do we want now? Do I want to set? No, I want to be able to try and play Muxus next turn, so. He knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. I could do the thing that I'm not saying out loud, because how dare you? How dare you? <gasps> Goblin Chieftain! If it's not enough to win, homie, don't do it. You're not going to want to do that. I know you're thinking in your brain. <laughs> Give you a nice. That way you can see how how long the delay is here. You could play that Krinko mob boss, but you ain't gonna wanna. You gonna be real sad if you do. Talking mad shit over here. No! How dare you! Oh, that's it. Ooh, okay. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Oh, nice. Okay, here we go. We'll do that. Skablam. I'm surprised you didn't attack there. I would have attacked there, buddy. That's 10, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 damage. I guess it wasn't lethal. I mean, you can kill something here. But, chances are, 
it's not gonna help. I have lots of ways to get haste. That's that's the other issue, bud. Look at that. What did you do? How did you what? Well Okay. Let's see. Goblin Chieftain, Conspicuous Snoop, who's on the top? War Chief. Um I mean, unless you block everything here. You're gonna be on trouble. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Okay. Oh no. I'm the nervous. All right. Look at the massacre. Look how he massacred my boy. Cool. Enjoy your two goblins. What is... Ooh, got a big old bug bite. That was a big Muxus the Grand... Gr Goblin Grandee turn. This, this Mamma Jamma just comes into play and you put all the goblins from the top six cards of your library into play with converted mana cost five or less. And then he gets plus one plus one for every other attacking when he attacks every other goblin you control. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this. This is going to be even more unfair. We're going to take this one. Choose the one to keep. And now, my brother-in-law knows the power. The power! Uh, yeah, I guess we'll do that. We will take the action, and we will try and find one of you. Okay. We'll take that action, and we'll try and find you. And then we draw some cards. That's pretty cool. And we'll just go ahead and go again. <laughs> Stop it! He's dead already! <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Now, you see, bud, that's why you really want that Muxus grand guy. Yeah, let's go again. You want to play your green deck against my goblin deck? I don't have any other historic decks. I'm thinking after Zendikar Rising, I'll have enough wild cards to dip into Historic, but we'll see. And again, if anybody else... I'm going to challenge you, bud. Bring bring the green pain. Yeah, it's for wild cards, but have you, have you followed my crafting advice yet, bud? <laughs> wild thing. You made my heart sing. You make everything groovy. I think I used to sing that, but instead of saying wild thing, I used to sing swamp thing. It's a bit better. Um... We'll put you and you. Is that really what I want to do? Yeah. Wes, you got this. This is all you, buddy. My hand is Garbo. <clears throat> Yikes. Too much. Too much manas. Stop. Stupid. All right, uh, now we're gonna play this. <laughs> Treasure token animation is pretty legit. No more, not allowed, no, no ooze. How dare you? All right.
right. Let's do this. Auto pay. No attacks, because you're about to beat my ass anyway. I uh, like I mulliganed twice and didn't get any of the cards that I needed. Oh no! That's quite a card. I saw this the first time you played against me. It's insane. Yeah, beat my ass, daddy. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that's a draw. Hmm. All right. Could play all that, but I'm not going to. No attacks. Good game. I died. Oh, man. Want to do one more, buddy? Want to see how this plays against Stompy again. Last one. You got it. I'll challenge you again. Challenge! Best of three. Okay. That's fair. I don't even think I have a sideboard. Oh, I guess I do. Um, no, no, maybe that. Still feel like that's not a great option. Let me sideboard here. There, we'll do that. And then, um... And then, uh, and then, uh, and then, uh... Okay. We'll try that on for size. Oh, what? I wonder why it says craft. That was weird. I had all those cards already, I'm pretty sure. Didn't say craft before. All right, that's that's a hand. Druid of the Cowl. Yep. Gore Claw. Mm. That's a spicy boy. I'm gonna get our favorite homie. No attacks yet. No attacks. Carnage Tyrant, how dare you! Ooh, that is a cool animation. No blocks. All right, so let's play this. I've got enough mana to play this and sacrifice something, so let's do that. Let's auto pay, and then we'll sacrifice our matron. And we'll just see what happens. That's pretty good. Now what? Now we can probably see yeah let's sacrifice you we'll play this we'll play auto pay we'll sacrifice wily goblin here and then we'll all attack Now, do I want to do more things? Uh, we'll end our turn there. Ready, the counterattack. Ready yourself. Mono green. Ooh, 10 damage. How dare you. Bro, what are you doing? Good game. But I want to do stuff. <laughs> Fucking goblins. That's right. That's right. 
All right. Now we got one more game to go because this is traditional magic. We're one and one. Who is better, Green Leafy Boys or Goblin Weak Weaky Boys? I don't know what to call them. They're they're weird. All right. I'm not going to sideboard again. All I did was add. I'm going to spoil it for you. All I did was add Jim Palm Incinerators, and they're useless. So, good luck. <laughs> the best it could do is kill a mana dork. And how great of a term in Magic the Gathering is mana dork, huh? What a term, right? Am I first? No, it's got to be Wes. More tea. Uh, you know it, girl. I'm ready. I'm ready for some more. Thank you. Alright, so. Any game that starts with this is pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. Leyland of Abundance. What does that fucking do? What are you doing? What? What? That's cheating. Hey, everyone. My, my brother-in-law is cheating. He's a big cheaty boy. Take one damage, you fiend. How dare you have four mana on... Wait, what? Oh, tap a creature for mana. That's more fair, I suppose. Ah, look at that, eh? No attacks. Not today. What do we say? Ooh, that's not good. That's a no bueno. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, why not? Well, auto pay, get rid of the Snoop here. We know one of them is going to be a Wily Goblin, thanks to Snoopy. No oh, baby! <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> Look at that turn! Every one of them! Good lord! <laughs> this is payback for that other day when uh, you played the historic deck against Standard. That's a big oof. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> yellow card. <laughs> Take your yellow card and you know where to put it. Oh! What? What? You can earn daily quests playing with other people? That seems like cheating. What do we get here? An uncommon? Ah. That might put us over the top, though. Ooh. We are at exactly 200%, everyone. I'm sorry, Wes. But let's be fair. I do have an access to more cards than you. You're the best. Thank you so much. My girlfriend's getting me tea, everyone. I feel loved. Let me try one more thing. Oh, you can't... Yeah, you can't end the night on a loss. Uh, is this the button I push? Accept. Okay. You want to go against goblins again, I would assume? Oops. I'm, I'm ready for it. X gonna give it to you. Avery, how's raid night? Is it going well? Oh, this is terrible. Wes, you're going to beat me up. And I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you beat me up, dog. Ooh. Ooh. What? What are we doing here? What you going to do? What you doing there, big boy? Uh, do I want to do that now? You got some Demir Guildgate? What? Ooh, are you Mill? Ooh, that's so exciting. All right, let's do... Hmm. I think the most efficient play... Ah, oh, man, I don't know. Yeah, let's get that out there. Blocks my 2 2. That's fine. I know you. I know what you're doing. Man, it fills four cards. Thief of Sanity! How dare you! 
Whenever it comes into pl it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of their library, exile one of them face down, then put the rest of their graveyard you may look at and cast that. Mm. You know I love you, buddy. But today, we're going to say goodnight to everybody's friend. Uh, we're going to go ahead and matron up. We're going to take action. Guess who we're getting, pal? The Grand Wizard! Why not, right? Alright. Now, everyone at home, he could have Ritual of Soot and just ruin my life right now. Sweet Oblivion! I love the art for this card. I actually just recently got the alternate art for this. I'm not sure why it's not, you know, showing me things. Um, how dare you, sir? How dare you? Alright, let's see how we did, y'all. Ooh. Oh my god. Ah, you have one life? <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm coming for that ass. Ooh, okay. I wanted that tower too. Mmm. Ashiok's good though. Let's see how many cards do I have left? Twenty-eight. I don't think man, what a what a well, check out what I got. Don't hang up, or you can look at the stream. Check this out. Look at all the stuff I've got though. Like I had the prospector. If I'd had that last turn, I would have had you, because I could have made infinite mana with mob boss. Oh man. I can't believe that you lived either, but m math is for blockers, as they say. So you know. Let's do that. Let's do the- ooh, that was really loud in my headphones. Let's do this. Auto pay, we'll sacrifice two of you. Oh, I guess that's good. Oh, that's how you have to do it? That's weird. But yeah, look at this, yo. Let's see how, how deep this goes. Ooh, 36 attackers? Mux is a 41, 41. <laughs> oh man we should have a new series where i just beat up on you and then we can have like a redemption series where you beat up on me but that was unfair that felt unfair i don't know about your mill deck bud why don't you send me the list in discord and i can look at it myself be more than happy to check out some mill especially um, if you haven't seen a lot of Zendikar Rising spoilers, there's a lot of really interesting stuff for Standard. Uh, did that to a guy a bit ago in Historic. You did mill him? That would be really sweet. Oh, man. That was fun, bud. Yeah, send me the mill deck. I want to see it. Oh, send me your Goblin deck, too, and I'll help you out with that if you want. I know you don't necessarily have the the wild cards right now, but we'll see what we can do. Oh, fresh tea. Thank you, Uncle Iroh. Oh, hot! It's a hot tea in my mug of the stream, Artemis. Thanks, bud. I assume that you have to go to bed since you have to be up at O Dark Thirty. Good night, bud. Love you too. But yeah, if anybody else wants to play, hit me up. I am always down to play some more Magic: The Gathering with my friends. Uh, the whole reason we started this stream was to start kind of bringing Friday Night Magic into my home whenever I wanted to play Magic. Which happens to be at least three nights a week. Um, if you guys haven't heard, we also have a D&D &D stream Saturday nights. Uh, no, I think I took your name off because you've won. And we want to try and clear the wheel of names before we start it. And uh, I'll start thinking of another gift giveaway once we've cleared everybody's name off. But believe me, I've got plenty of packs. And there's only so many names. But don't worry. Um, yeah. Who boy. Yeah, I just want to try and spread the thank you around. You know, there's lots of people that have really helped support the stream since we started out. And, of course, we made affiliate, which is all thanks to y'all. So that's why we're having the giveaway. That's why we're continuing the giveaway. And, I mean, what am I going to do with a bunch of fully, completely, totally licensed Karn stickers, you know? Which I've been working on a lot of my 
tech skills lately, specifically mostly with DaVinci Resolve and learning all of the like fusion part of the DaVinci Resolve, which is a lot of the animation and masking and fancy stuff about video editing. So I've been having a lot of fun with that lately, but I'm also dipping my toes into GIMP. So I'm going to try and make better stickers and better emotes just because it's more fun. Um, but that being, oh, there it is. Oh, you could have just dropped it in Discord for everybody, bud. I'm going to copy this and paste it into the Magic the Gathering part of the Discord. Uh, yeah, that's us. And then I'll do the same for the next one. And again, if you guys aren't a part of the Discord, please allow me to drop an invite for all of you. Come join us. We've actually got a pretty cool community of folks that are mostly local to Hampton Roads at the moment. But, I mean, hey, that's not bad. Current gobs. You got Emori, huh? Interesting. I never really thought about that, considering I can't really... I guess the Phyrexian Tower would pay, pay for it. It's green-black, right? Hmm. Oh, what you want for gombos. Okay. So let's actually... Let's import this, if this is in... Our, if this is the right format, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Green or black, which you do have some tap lands and you've got a blood crypt. Um, Phyrexian Tower might also be an interesting add here if you're wanting to get Imorian, but I think, honestly, you don't need them. I don't think you need them. That being said, one card, if you're going to run Chain Whirler, that I would run is Call of the Death Dweller. What? No. Stop getting... Get rid of Colorless. Stop it. What are you doing? This is weird. Why isn't this working? So it's a sorcery, it's from Icoria. Maybe I need to turn that off? Ah, that's what it is. Yeah, so Call of the Death Dweller plus Goblin Chain Whirler, if you're already going to run black, is very interesting. It's a board wipe, essentially, against anything that's not going to have protection from red. In this case, it gives your Goblin Chain Whirler upon entry into the battlefield death touch. Therefore, the one damage it does to each opponent and each creature and each planeswalker they control has death touch. So it kills all the creatures. It's wonderful. That and, you know, the mirror match with a Goblin Chain Whirler on the other side of the field. Phew, so good. But, um, Wes, one thing that you might want to consider is there's this free add on called MTG Assistant through Aether Hub. And it allows me to do some pretty cool stuff. Specifically, I can go, I think it's this one, to the crafting tool. <laughs> and don't, answer me this. Do you have a lot of common and uncommon wild cards right now? Yeah, I would get rid of them, Mori, for sure. Let's just do that. Bye. Oop, nope, we want that back. Um, if you have a lot of common and uncommon wild cards, I do. What you need to do is get this crafting tool and craft every single common and uncommon from these sets to give yourself more vault progress from each set. Like, if you look here, if you ever buy any packs or if you start playing a little bit more, you'll soon be overwhelmed with the number of common and uncommon wild cards that you have. Okay, so that's not enough to start crafting whole sets yet. You might want to just hold on to it for right now. But, for example, if you were to buy a box one time that probably give you an overwhelming amount if you started playing and laddering as much as i do that probably give you a lot of icrs eventually that uh would add up over time and crafting the commons and uncommons for a set means that whenever you get those commons and uncommons instead of getting the card you get a certain percentage towards getting more wild cards and you can redeem the vault every 100 percent so right now I could redeem it twice, but it gives you one Mythic Rare, two Rares, and three Uncommon Wild Cards. Which, every Uncommon that you get that you already have four of is 0.3%, and every Common is 0.1%. So it really adds up over time, especially if you play like I do. 
But um, yeah, so this deck, I don't know about main deck Jim Palm Incinerator. I, I, I need to add the Skirk Prospector because it's just, what a card, right? Muxus, definitely a four of. Krinko, I'd probably drop down to two. Um, I'd up the number of War Chiefs. Because, again, the whole goal of this deck is get your uh, Muxus out. You want to get Muxus out as fast as possible. I have Cinder Barons. I just don't have the 19 Cinder Barons. But Muxus is obviously what you guys saw from the games, what really wins the game with Historic Goblins, to the point where this is one of the decks to beat, I feel, in Historic um, one thing that's still true is Thoughtseize is in a historic now. Wrath of God is back in a historic now. So when those are in the field, Goblins is a little bit weaker just because mid-range decks can put a stop to what we're doing. But even then, one Muxus off the top, if we can play it, complete recovery from Wrath of God. Almost wins you the game every time. But War Chief makes everything cheaper, so you definitely want four of those. Chieftain makes everything tougher, so you want four of those. Obviously, they're not um, legendary, so it's not going to hurt you to have four in the deck. Um, Gem Palm, I don't know about this being main deck. I probably want... CMC for Goblin. For this, yeah, Goblin Ringleader, I'd probably want main deck over that. Um, it's got a lot more card advantage than Jim Palm Incinerator. Sure, you do draw the one card, but I'd only bring in the Jim Palm Incinerator if I was going up against, like, your deck, the green deck with big, thick boys to get in the way of things early on, or uh, Mana Dorks that I want to try and slow you down with. But, uh, yeah, Goblins is definitely really strong. Krinko is a mana... Krinko plus Skirk, Prospe per Skirk Prospector is just a mana engine. And if you get both of those on the field with a, any number of goblins, you can just run away with the game. But, yeah. Uh, I will take a look at the mill deck later on. I'm actually going to get back to the draft for right now. See how we do. We'll save that. It's invalid. That's fine. Let's continue our Throne of Eljane draft. So far, we're 3-0 with our Golgari control food deck. The idea being we've got quite a few bombs late game. We've got Sir Conrad. Yes, Sir Conrad is a bomb. We've got Garrick the Cursed Huntsman. Definitely a bomb. Just two, two twos per turn, no matter what, is great. The fact that it doesn't give any loyalty, okay, fine. But, I mean, if we end up sacrificing it or using it as a chump block, we get it back. And then destroy target creature, draw a card. What a great tempo play. We're not only taking away one of their cards, but getting yet another one that pays for Garrick in card advantage. Uh, his ultimate is also really nice too. It's cheap as long as you can keep pumping out two twos, which again in limited is insane. You eventually get to his ultimate, which lets you break real stalled board states. Other than that, we've got Festive Funeral, we've got Out Muscle uh, for removal. Uh, one other bomb that I failed to mention was Clackbridge Troll, which in limited, gaining life and drawing cards is just ah, so good. Yeah. Dropped all multi-lands. Okay, that's a plan. Added Ringleader. Ringleader's really good. I think that you won't be disappointed with that one. But um, until you get Muxus, Goblins really won't be as strong as you want it to be. So uh, if you're interested in actually being in competitive Historic and laddering with Historic, I highly recommend that you save your next four wild cards for four copies of Muxus. I don't see it getting banned anytime soon. And even if they did, you'd get your wild cards back. So that's my recommendation for you for sure. But um, yeah, play big boys in game. Festive Funeral to remove stuff. Cauldron's Gift to hopefully get something back. You have to cast it with Adamant. Um, oh, I take that back. You do not have to cast it with Adamant. If you cast it with Adamant, you can actually get more cards in the graveyard to choose from. But at the same time, who wants to take that risk? You want to use this just to get your big creatures that they use to bake in the pie or something like that back, right? Fierce Witch Stalker is a great four drop in this deck with food and trample. Mm, it's great. 
Oakham Adversary helps us draw cards while providing a very good trade for any of their bigger, badder stuff. More food, more food, more food, and drawing cards is good. Heraldric Banner ramps us into an early Sir Conrad or an early Garrick. And then all of our two drops are just really nice. Ginger Brute has the ability to either get some plus one, plus one counters or get equipped with Giant Skewer. All those could be good for our Ginger Brute boy. And then he can be unblockable. Now the one thing I wanted to look at, Rose, Rose Thorn Halberd. Attach it to non-human, you control gets plus one, plus two, plus one. The downside of this is obviously its equip cost is five. So if you don't have a non-human to attach it to, which we do run our fair share of both. We've got uh, Eye Collector, Wildwood Tracker. Marley Leaf Rider. Uh, Fierce Witch Stalker. Oakum Adversary. Our Troll. And our Tree Folk. And of course the Wolves from Garrick. All of those can get it. But at the same time, my concern with this is that I won't have something to attach it to and it'll just be a dead artifact on my field for a long time. That being said, this deck's worked out pretty well for us so far. Like I said, we're 3 and 0... Oh which isn't, you have to go six in order to get your money back. Five is technically you get your wins, or maybe it's, no. So it's five because a pack is 200 gems, but six is what we're aiming for today because we want to pay for our drafts with our drafting ability. I don't like to quick draft as much because we don't pay attention. Like, even if you pay attention to what's being passed to you, the algorithm picks strange things, whereas people pick things that make sense right away our mana is great and we're going first i don't see any downsides to playing this <clears throat> sir conrad is really good especially with our eye collector we're gonna mill some stuff Ooh, nice so we got rid of a 2-2 flyer and everything that has an adventure enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter. So that's a strong uncommon that we just got rid of. Happy for that. Up next, I think I'd like to play Forbidding Fruit. But... And also play Tempting Witch. I'd rather... Actually, we can do it next turn if we want to. And right now, this gives us a blocker for the 2-2. Forbidding Fruit will help us hit our land drop and possibly play Wildwood, Stracker, Wildwood Tracker next turn. Alright, there's our land drop. Um, let's do this. We won't get to pay Adamant. We'll target myself. Alright, there's our... Our win con, essentially, and uh, yeah, let's send our eye collector over. Deny him some more cards here, hopefully. Sir Conrad plus eye collector will be quite nice. Fierce witch stalker. Okay. Hmm. I'd really like. To play Sir Conrad. But I think we're gonna play the tree folk, or are we? Let's play Sir Conrad. And we'll just keep milling. It does extra damage now. There's one creature. If we have to take four here from the Witch Stalker, I'm fine with that. Okay, so we're out muscling. Um, no blocks for now. Let's play this. Does he do it? Nice. All right, cool. 
Um, it's got trample. Yeah, we'll take that. Another creature? No, it's outflank. Okay. Ooh, there goes Cauldron's Gift. That would have been nice. Okay. Oof. Uh, no blocks. Might as well. Let's see here. What's our best option? So he's not going to be able to tap the Clack Bridge Troll anymore. If I, I've got six, so if I play a Heraldic Banner, I can play either Fierce Witch Stalker or my Tree Folk. I think that's... We'll just pick black, actually. And what we'll do here is we will... Do this. And we'll keep up the pressure here. And we've still got mana for a tree folk. If he gets a flyer, we can fell the pheasant. What are we thinking here, buddy? Okay. Okay. Hmm. So here I can block the 5-5. Five five. I think that's the best choice. All right. we draw our equipment we can equip eye collector for lethal here though if he wants to attack the wander mare i think we go ahead and block a bunch oh i forgot i have tea this is lovely oops it's all wet sure mara leaf rider search for a basic land okay that's pretty good beanstalk giant Coming down next turn. We'll pass. Okay. Uh, I think here we'll go ahead and gain some life. <sighs> I don't have any knights on the field. Here I can do Witch Stalker. Let's do Witch Stalker. <sighs> we'll hold off on that just in case. And we'll end our turn. It's got bacon to a pie, maybe? Mm. I don't know why I'm saying that. He definitely does not. He's got white and green, which, as far as removal goes, isn't wonderful. He can put a semi-pacifism uh, on there. He can do what he did with Kinrith here. He can out-maneuver or out-muscle, I think it's called. 
Sure. Ooh. It's pretty good. Doesn't have reach, though. I wonder. What will you do? He's lasting with food just like we want to. All right. How many cards in the graveyard? Seems pretty good. Let's do that. Stop him from gaining life. And is this an instant? No, it's a sorcery. We'll do that. He could also have Fell the Pheasant. Now, if I do this, he gains life in response, so no point. Oh, he's going to use it to bring back our boy. Okay. That's awful greedy. It's awful greedy. I would just grind it out if I were you, bud. <sighs> okay. The tense moments of Magic the Gathering. You're at one life with potentially the ability to gain what's six, seven, nine. That's how you count, right? Well, let's go ahead and eat our food. Right? Might as well. Ooh, that seems pretty good. Let's do this. Let's do that. We'll just attack here. Makes sense. Makes sense. And we can make him eat his last food. Eat your last food. Oh, that's right. It doesn't count him. Oh, well. <clears throat> Maybe he's got beans. If he's got beans, he can hold on. This is where you kind of wish that you had the return to nature. Not today, though. What is that? Oh, that's nice. Sure. He's thinking real hard. Beanstalk giant. All right. So he just went all out, didn't he? Just decided to attack it with even the zero ones. That's interesting sure now we'll attack here we will attack here 
We'll chump this guy. Well, is this guy first strike? No. We will... Hmm. No, I don't want that guy there. We will attack... Chump that guy there. And we'll block that guy there. And, uh, yeah. When you attack and end up with more life... Than you originally thought. <laughs> You're just hoping that I messed up on blockers, I suppose. We had a good board. They had a good board. It would have been tough to deal with that giant. It just didn't come down fast enough. But early pressure with that uh, mill flyer was really nice. Could have chosen to put the plus one, plus one counters on something else. I don't think that it would have worked out as well for us. That being said, oof, putting that many cards in my graveyard felt bad until the minus, minus, minus 11, minus 11 came out. That was really nice. Being able to take out that big boy. That Troll King is insane, man. I had it one of these drafts, and it only showed up for like one game out of however many I went that time. But man, when it did, it felt so good. Having a thick creature that either gains you 9 life or just comes right back from the graveyard. So nice. Ooh, what did that burp taste like? My burp tasted like something. I don't know what, but I'm not lying when I say it was good. Uh, sure. We will keep. Hopefully not regret. Might as well get in for one. Got some red, huh? Oof. Let's see. I could trade for the Rimrock Knight. Oh, he doesn't even have... He can't even block. Never mind. So we'll take three. Ooh, does homie have Embercleave? Ooh, Giant Skewer, though. That's pretty good. So that'll be decent. Um, Let's do black for this, in which case, shit. So if we're going to do black with Heraldric Banner, we can't really play our Wildwood Tracker. So what's our most efficient mana right now? It's probably to do... Uh, I guess it's... Let's do Tempting Witch. We can out muscle plus invulnerability with Tempting Witch next turn because it'll have Adamant and it'll be indestructible. Yeah, we're going to take five. But that's okay. It's okay. I'm hoping that our big dudes come our way. No blocks. And then we can get the banner rolling, and we can get the Wildwood Tracker rolling at the same time, and we can... I don't have any knights. We can just play the Swordmaster, maybe. Ooh, we got a Lockthwain. That's pretty good. That's card advantage in draft. I don't think you want to take that much damage right now, but it's card advantage. Okay. A 4-3, huh? Let's see. Well, let's do... This... We'll name Black. 
And we'll play a Wildwood Tracker. And we will... Boom. If you want to trade for my Tempting Witch, I'm okay with that. All right, so we're taking four, and they're taking four. You think you have me. You do not. Ah, we're going to take six. But that's okay. <clears throat> we'll leave a blocker open. We'll have Wildwood Tracker and Smitten Swordsman. Gain some life. Ubladia, Ublada. What you gonna do? Hmm. Nothing for a second. Opportunistic dragon, huh? All right. So he's gonna take that for as long as it takes me to fell the pheasant. Opportunistic Dragon's quite nice. Wish I had one more mana. Hey. Let's do this. Then it comes back. And then we go ahead and play this. Oop, cancel that. So here, we can still block even if he giant skewers onto the paladin. Or, we can just eat some food. Seems like a good use of your mana. We've got a lethal counterattack here. You can block one thing, and maybe we can kill it. We'll see. Did I already use my out muscle? I did. <laughs> Depending on the top card, we either alpha or we attack with everything but Tempting Witch. Either way... Gaining three life here seems pretty good for a trade with Lost Legion. Okay. Sir Conrad. Okay. So here we go. So if he blocks, two damage goes through. He has to block something which will die. Good game. Didn't exactly do the math, but we made it. We didn't block because we didn't want him to have life gain in the form of a food token. Because Giants Skewer, whenever it does damage to a creature, they get to make a food token. So that's why we didn't block and we chose to gain life instead. Alright. What is that for us tonight? Oh, some more gems, that's nice. So that's five wins, almost even money, zero losses so far. All thanks to Artemis, the friendly teacup. Mm. <sighs> okay. We'll keep seven. Hopefully we draw another land here. That'd be nice. All right, so we got blue-white flyers probably. That would be the smart choice. Two to the bottom. Okay. There's another land. We like that, so... We'll get this bad boy out. See if we can't skewer something. Hmm. 
Oof. Okay. Oh, that's rough. Wishful merfolk. Take one. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and play this. I feel like Cauldron's Gift would be less than ideal here. One more land before Clackbridge Toral. Um, yeah, I mean, might as well. Put that on there. If we don't draw a land, we can equip it and start swinging for some damage. If we do, we don't. So let's see here. How do we want to do it? We can't be invulnerable. So let's do this. We'll just hold that there. No attacks. So it gets a plus one, plus one counter on Fairy Vandal. Next turn we can outmuscle it. Or we can clack bridge troll. I think outmuscle is probably the play. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. So let's do this. Which we get to have our food token, I guess. I guess it's not combat damage. Oh well. Oh, this is going to be a bad counterattack. I don't really have anything worth Cauldron's gifting either. Oof. Fantress Paladin. Okay. So we could play that. And we could play Eye Collector. I just don't think that we're going to have enough. Yeah, that's going to be rough. Hmm. Well, I didn't get Realm Cloaked this game, so I feel like we're in a tough spot. Even if we draw the land now. We needed that land two or three turns ago, unfortunately. Alright. And you know, that wasn't a bad curve to start out with, to be honest with you. I just needed that other land. But, yeah, it's a good game. Oh, no attacks. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, there we go. It's the concede right there. Well, five and one. Still a great record. Let's keep going. And hope that our deck gives us the land that we need sometimes. That's just the heart of the cards, you know? That's variance and best of one. It's how she blows, unfortunately. Hmm. Alright. We're going to keep. The turn to play is probably Mara Leaf Rider. Into Heraldric. Into Oakham Adversary. I think I'm going to name Green. I uh, will play that first. We'll say Green because we already have the double black. Alright, so they've got no plays. That passed real fast. Don't have any one drops to play with the banner this coming turn. So it's not likely to be better off that we play something like... Oh, we do now. Okay. We're going to say green. Yeah. 
No attacks. If he wants to attack with this guy, then we'll just counterattack for five. So here I think we go ahead and pay this. Good tag. Ooh. He gets his little dude back, and now he can play it as a 3-3. Something to be said for that. Enchanted Carriage. Is that a vehicle? Is that what that is? I don't even know how these work. I guess you need to tap 2 to make it work? I don't know. Let's play this. Can it block? So it can. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll make that trade. Hmm. Okay, this time it's a 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. Hmm, that's a tough choice. I could sacrifice the banner. That's the card we needed. The hunt we were born for the hunt. That is 100% the card we needed. sure I've got blockers. Garrick is the one that's going to win me the game here. Oh, man. Whew. Can't stop, won't stop. Man, that was a, that was a top deck. Mm -hmm. Anybody seen Sling Blade? It's been a while for me. All right, so we made it to even money. 850 gems, one pack, so that's a total of plus 100 gems. Law of averages is on our side. We draft a lot, so we get a lot of gems. Game can be over in one. The game can be over in two losses here. I feel like we've got some really strong cards, so here's hoping. This this limited format does seem quite bomb-heavy. The Planeswalkers are pretty good in most cases. Hmm. We're on the draw. Yeah, we'll keep. We'll give her a go. Eh. Nah. 
we'll get our sword. I'm doing good, Panda. How you doing? Sorry, I just noticed your sweet ass uh, emotes there. It's my bad. We are. We went ahead and opted, despite our just you know wonderful success before, to do a quick draft with Throne of the Drain. Just try and mix it up. We ended up going seven and two, or no, yeah, seven and two with green black and Corset 2021. And right now we are six and one with black and green in Throne of Eldraine. Mostly because we managed to draw some pretty decent cards. That's, I mean, that's magic, isn't it? I like having Sir Conrad on turn four. And here we're going to say black. And we're not going to attack. Not yet. Because it's going to pump all of our creatures. But yeah, green-black is one of my favorite archetypes of all time. You've been here before. I've talked about the rock deck and spirit monger. Like, I just love killing stuff. And then also having big creatures. And that's just so much fun. It's so much fun, guys. Alright, so here we Conrad... I could attack in with the Smitten Swordmaster, as I am going to end up here just using Out Muscle and Fell the Pheasant. I will not um, do that. Actually, I will. Because if he trades with the Smitten Swordmaster here, I gain three life and they lose two. Okay. And this is going to clue them in that this is a must-kill creature. Makes me wish I had some sort of hexproof something or other to back this guy up with, but unfortunately, we don't today. I want to see what other big flyy boys he's got before I play more stuff. How did that happen again? Each creature that has an adventure comes into play with an extra doodad. Oh. Uh -huh. So what you're saying is, there's a chance. So he's got the plus seven, plus seven, right? What do you guys think? I think we're going to go ahead and just fell the pheasant there. He'll take one. And we can tempting witch. I don't want to attack if he's not got open mana just yet. I get the feeling he's got that, hey, this guy gets plus seven, plus seven nonsense. And I don't know. Should he have probably kept it to keep, keep this guy alive? I don't know. Mm. Rose Thorn Halberd. Okay. He's got a 5-5 five five now. Interesting. That makes it tough to outmuscle considering we've only got one green mana. Archon of Absolution is gonna die, though. That's that's just happening. So we're gonna do Out Muscle, and we're gonna punish this. And he's gonna end up taking nine for this discretion. And we will end our turn. Archon of Absolution, though? Oh, man, what a card. Taxes are attacks. Protection from white, which so many creatures that are good in this game, in this format especially, are white. Oof. We got Savvy Hunter, but we've also got Clackbridge Troll. That should give us the card advantage we need. So he wants to die? Okay. That's fine too. Uh, my turn. I can bring him back. Ooh, do you guys want to? Hmm. Let's first attack with our Tempting Witch. And let's bring back Conrad. Do we want to Adamant? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, we'll bring back Sir Conrad the Grim as a 7-5. Another Archon. Good game, buddy. 
All right, so seven and one in Throne with Green Black Food slash Bombs. Oh, I made it up a rank, too. Platinum three. That feels good. Bronze, I know that you gave me a deck before. Did you want to play anything against... Ooh, we got a Mythic? Luminous Brood Moth. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, yeah, we won. So let's add this to decks, because we'll probably do something cool with this later. Uh, claim prize. Cool. So yeah, we, we're up there in gems again. Winning. Can You can definitely get enough gems. Ooh, ooh, what's this? Oh. Okay. Thanks. I shouldn't look a gift mythic in the mouth, I suppose. But hey, more gems is also good. More uh, wild cards to craft stuff is also good. Have you been excited for any of the spoilers you've seen, Bronze? Have you checked out Discord? Because we've been following it in the Magic Spoilers channel pretty regularly. It is so cool. I love what this set's going to be doing for Magic. Oh, <sighs> And if you want, we could play a game too. I don't mind. Um, that always tricks me. <laughs> what was in the store today? I didn't even check. Or if I did, I didn't pay attention. I guess I already had that. I think that was from the Mastery Pass last season. Mm. Of all these, I'm not a fan of the full border. I I do kind of like the Frogify. That is kind of neat. But for 300 gems, probably going to pass. What other formats are going on right now? Color Challenge. I guess that's because they reset and made it available all the time. We've got more Premiere Set. We've got traditional standard events and historic standard events. I wonder why they don't have like a standard 2021 event. That would be fun for people. They could make some pretty interesting decks and bring it for gold. I like those because it allows you to experiment more and you most of the time end up with more gold than you started, which who doesn't love farming gold? Uh, that being said, oh man, I cannot wait for the drafting to change. Let's go and do another Premier Corset 2021 draft. We'll probably get through the picks tonight, and we'll do the draft tomorrow. I'm trying to feature the archetypes that I haven't already featured on YouTube, which I've featured... Blue-green card draw is very good. I've featured black-green morbid. i featured blue-white flyers. I've tried to feature um, black-white... We're ready. Black-white life gain, just the gain three archetype, but we've had a lot of trouble finding the good uncommons for that one. Hmm. This pack is... Interesting. Not sure if I want to go black this early. Kerovark is okay. He's not great in this set. He only kills about 17% of the creatures in this set. I'll go ahead and take a freebooter for now. Nothing is standing out. Rousing Reed is quite good, but I don't think it's better than a freebooter. Okay. I'll take an Acolyte. As always, ooh, there's a Karn boy. Clean yours. Yeah. Uh, Karn boys are best boys, as we all know. He's my favorite. Oh, man. I'm going to try, whenever I have some downtime from work, to just get into the Wizards archive and read up on some of the past ten years of Magic the Gathering story. I gave up both on Magic, really, and the storyline in Lorwyn. I read all the books for Lorwyn and, and Shattermorn, and then I think they actually stopped doing the the books for each set after that. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure there was not a Zendikar book. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but... <sighs> I didn't mind visiting other planes. I started in Stronghold and got through the invasion and read all the books from... 
all the way from Thrawn through the Brothers War and Urza Saga through Mercadian Masks and the Wraith Cycle and Invasion. Saw the Phyrexians go down. Loved it. Oteria was cool. Kamal and the Marari. That was really neat. And having Karn show up as a planeswalker at the very end was also really cool. To save Jessica, which is Kamal's barbarian sister, who had also been Phage. I think we take the Hollow Blade. Is the Hollow Blade better than the Finishing Blow? I think so. Ooh, there's another Basri's Acolyte. I'll take that. Our boy to the right is kind of slowing us down. Craden. Craden, if you're watching, I know you're not. But you do you, man. Don't let anybody bully you. All right, the next pack is where we see where people really aren't doing things. So people really aren't doing black. People really aren't doing white. Because just look at this. Um, Pestilent Haze. Warded Battlements. I'm going to take... Do I want another Hallow Blade? Hallow Blade could be good. Let's take another one of him. Two drops. We love two drops. We love them. This next pack, though, let's see. Ooh. Probably the best one drop we could ask for in white. And after that, we're starting to see black disappear. Ooh, man. That's three Acolytes. I've never seen that in the first pack. Pick seven. We got three Basri's Acolytes. Y'all, we doing it. Uh, here we take the Sky Scanner, I believe. Tavern Swindler's meh. I think she's a garbage uncommon. I wouldn't play her if I had to. All right, let's take the Skeleton Archer. Blood Glutton. And you see now, by pack 10-ish, black is starting to dry up. But that's pretty much because by pack 10, most of the playables out of any pack are already picked. We'll take the Valorous Steed. That's nice. 5-5 five, five for 5. All right, Cage Zombie or Liliana Steward. I like... I like them both. Hmm... I think I like Cage Zombie. Mm, you know what? Cage Zombie will come back around. Let's curve out. Do we want one of those? Nah, we'll take a... Mm. Let's take the Shield Mate. That can be such a strong boy, you know? Turret Ogre, you're going to the sideboard. This is us, once again, trying to do white gain three. I don't think... God damn, that's two. Don't think that that's going to happen for us today. Feet of Resistance stands out. All the black here is not great. I don't like Kerevark at all. We could send the signal that we're not black by taking that. <sighs> we'll take the... The Glorious Anthem is a three-mana do-nothing enchantment, but we've got enough 1-1s one -ones that we might actually curve into a decent time. I am going to pass another Bosri's Acolyte. But that's just because we kind of have to. We could have a flyer. We could get this in there. We could carry and grub. Carry and grub is kind of thick. It's the greatest power among creature cards in your graveyard. Which isn't a lot. Hmm. Infernal Scarring could be really nice. Celestial Enforcer could be okay. That's a great uncommon. All these uncommons are pretty good. Kinetic Augur is not bad. But I think here I'll take the Scarring and hope that we can get a Life Linker. Oh, man. We'll take the Gale Swooper here. That's so many Basri's Acolytes. Like, in a pod to get five, let alone however many we've seen, you know? What are the odds? That's so big. This is a big away. Revitalize. We need to start getting some removal. Somebody's hating all our removal out of here. 
revitalize cage zombie. How are we doing on three drops? Pretty low on three drops, but I think revitalize is the better enabler here. Epitaph golem, silent art. Yeah, you see, it's drying up hard now. Take the gloom sower. It's still life gain. Oof. Take the pteranodon. Feet of resistance, alpine watchdog. Take the feet. Hopefully we get a tempered veteran or three <laughs> in the next pack because that is a great uncommon for us. With three Basri's Acolytes, that's a great uncommon for us. Our curve is pretty strong here. Uh, we'll take the Sanguine Indulgence because we could still get a discount with some of our stuff. We've got lots of life linkers. So I, I still think Blood Glutton is bad. I'd want to dub on that before I said it was any good. Oh, man. Hey, a 1-3 flyer for two. Look at our two drops. we got quite a few. All right. Got a couple of flyers. Three, right? Yeah. We've got Skeletal Archer, which kills a lot in this format. We've got some 1-1s, one we've got some 2-2s, two we've got some 3s, and then we've got a decent chance at some 4s. I guess we'll take the rare here. Who knows? It might end up good. Uh, yeah, we'll take the Burn Bright. Burn Bright could be quite explosive. Hey, look, a Cage Zombie to help us out in the three drop category. Come on, give me a nice bomb rare for black white. We really need a good showing. Planes, hey. Oof. Another acolyte. Pestilent haze. Secure the scene. We really don't have a lot of removal. But without a lot of removal, uh, we'd have to ramp up to five. I think the best card in here is just another Acolyte. Secure the scene. Ah, we'll take the secure the scene. We should be seeing a lot more black this go round than we saw the last one, but we'll see. We will see. We've got lots of bodies. How many creatures? 17. So we need some more spells. So I'm glad that we ended up picking the secure the scene. Got lots of playables. Lots of flyers. Lots of ways to get back stuff. Secure the scene here. Another steward. Secure the scene is good because it gets rid of taunter. It gets rid of a lot of stuff. I guess we'll take that. So what would we cut from this? I think we'd cut probably... Hmm. We're really low on threes. I love Watcher of the Spheres. That would be so good if we were blue-white flyers. I think... I wonder how good nine lives would be in draft. I don't think it'd be great. Gale Swooper is really good, though. But we already have... I think we want to take the... How many do we have? We have two. No, I think Gale Swooper is good. It's going to replace a worse creature. Finishing blow. All of our stuff is so small. Or our, our elimination is so expansive. It's expansive! Huh. I'm not so on this deck yet. Another Acolyte. Another one. Dare I? Is it the best card in this pack? Absolutely. Oh my god! Are you kidding me? How? Why? 
I guess without the tempered veterans to back him up, we're going to have a lot of trouble. And we haven't seen any, so it's probably not coming. Do I want four? Let's take a fetid imp. Good God. Yeah. There's another one. Ooh, we'll take the barons, though. We'll take the... Mm... Yeah, we'll take the black guard, though. It's probably going to the... Pardon me. Let's probably go into the sideboard, to be honest. Do another steward. Another scarring. Steward, cage zombie. We're still pretty light on three drops. Fountain, maybe. Sure strike is a Pretty good card. Fear is a pretty good card. All right. So let's let's make the cuts. We got to cut ten cards. Gloom Sower, you're an easy cut. Blood Glutton, you're an easy cut. Valorous Steed, you're an easy cut. All these Bowsery's acolytes are staying. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think we could probably get rid of some two drops here. I think maybe. Man, we got seven cards to get rid of. I think our best cards are probably in the two-drop format. Let's get rid of Scarring. It's early pressure, but it's not great. Imagine top-decking Scarring and just being like, oh, balls. Uh, we can get rid of one of those. Getting rid of a couple of Cage Zombies, not bad. Do we have any double black? Because that's what's going to hurt us here. Nope. We're pretty much straight white, splash and black. Most of our removal is white. I take it back. I guess Skeleton Archer could also be called removal. Oh, man. Oops. Nope. Bring that, bring that back. I think we get rid of one of you. I think I get rid of... The shield mate. And honestly, I think I dropped the one drops. So just get rid of that. Do I want to put anything back in? Uh, well, I want to keep the selfless savior. So. Yeah, we've got tons of two drops. We've got double feet of resistance to revitalize those. So let's look at our curve real quick. We've got one, two, no, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then we've got one, two, three. And then look at all the four drops we've got. We've got a lot of four drops. Hmm. I love Archer, though. Let's get rid of the Archer and put Shieldmate back in. Just because we're real thick on four drops. And then we have a chance at a better curve here. All right. Let's. What do you think? I think our man is solid. I think we've got one, two, three, four, five black mana tokens. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I think our swamps are a bit much. I think we need to actually take away two swamps and add two planes. Because hitting double white is going to be very important for us with three Bowser's Acolytes. We are taking a risk. But I think with a... 1 to 4 ratio of mana symbols that a 3 to 1 or a 2 to 1 ratio of lands is pretty fair. I could even drop down one more swamp and be even more confident. But I think that'll do us for now. So let's look at the final product. Final product is... Not a, a gain three. 
We really need Patrician. We need Griffin Airy for that to be very effective. We did not get Liliana's Devotee, which can be quite effective. What we really just have is some strange, controlly, pumpy, black-white deck with some flyers and hopefully some good cantrips and the form of Feet of Resistance and stuff. So I'm not 100% sold on this. Unfortunately, so many archetypes want either white cards or black cards. They don't really save enough for everybody else. But one day, we'll get a couple of indulging patricians, and we'll get dub, or we'll get uh, indulging patrician and our infernal scarring, and we'll just, you know, have a great time. But until then, we'll just keep failing at the game three archetype. Let's play one game, and then we'll do the Wheel of Names. One more time. Mm. It's pretty good. I say it's pretty good. It's okay. It has a turn two play. It has a turn four play. All right. We'll play this. We'll play a Fetid Imp. Got lots of damage in the air. He's got lots of damage on the ground. If he's got some way of killing my Fetid Imp here with removal and then attacking with the Elder, we can Feet of Resistance. We'll take the one. Draw and discard. I think we just keep it going with the tempo here. Hmm. I think this is the choice here. Eliminate and finishing blow. Fetid Imp, Fetid Imp, Mass Blackguard. I think we'll go ahead and take the Eliminate. And, uh, yeah. No attacks. We can wait on the Swoopers for now. Alright, so there's a land. kill this guy, since we can right now. He gets to draw a card and discard a card. <laughs> and he gets to finishing blow my freebooter if he gets a land here, which is probably what that was. He wants to kill the freebooter, he can go after the Fetid Imp. That's fine. We'll Gale Swoop next turn. Get Basri's Acolyte across for two damage and two life. I don't really mind him hitting me with the Elder every time so much. I've known that this finishing blow is going to come for quite a while, and he has to make a choice here between whether he gets his Eliminate back or kills this Acolyte, because Eliminate will not kill my Acolyte. Okay. Alright. Hmm. 
Hmm. If he wants to kill my Fetid Imp with his Fetid Imp, it kind of saves him some trouble. But we're still hitting for a lot of value here. Okay. Puts us back at 20, puts him down to 11. We've got so many more of those. I'll gladly take that trade. A really tough choice. What are we doing? He's got a finishing blow and another imp. What are we doing? That seems like the choice. And then you can get rid of the other fetid imp with the eliminate. And that's fine. No blocks. And now he either gets rid of Fetid Imp or his Eliminate. It's going to be tough for him to make this call, I think. So he gets rid of a land. And he gets rid of... What does he get rid of? What do you do? Sure. He's got double flying. <laughs> so now he's got a fetid imp and an eliminate for that. Yep. It's pretty good. Okay. And he gets to discard the lands that he's got in his hand. No blocks. Draw two, drain two. <sighs> and in his hand... Ooh, we got rid of Baron. That's interesting. Oh, he declined. Okay. So let's do this. See if he can do anything about what we got. It's a troublesome creature out of the way for us. Imagine if this was face to face. I wonder what he's got in his hand that could do this with one blue, one black. He could have lofty denial. Oh, I guess it's a good game. There we go. Cool. Platinum tier 3 with our black white fly con like evasion y control deck. Okay. One win in. Not too shabby. Hey there, everyone. I just wanted to say thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, please drop a like and subscribe for future content. If you want to join me live, I stream Tuesday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash naked Seamus. If you like Dungeons & Dragons, you can also join me on Saturday nights from 7pm to 10pm Eastern Standard Time while I DM Waterdeep Dragon Heist for my degenerate friends. Finally, if you're considering donating or subbing to my Twitch, I ask that you go to autism.org and make a donation there instead. Again, thanks for watching, and farewell for now.